Today I introduced a new M9 build project and discuss how to measure for aftermarket rear disc brakes. Tonight on Fab Race Mod Repeat, we're starting a new project series. This is a Moser M9 fabricated 9 inch forward housing. It's going in an upcoming project. We've been working on the project off and on for a bit and I'm going to make a build series out of making this, putting this rear end together. It's going to be mounted on leaf springs and it's going to be in a car with between 500 and 600 horsepower. And I have to apologize for a few specks of rust. This housing's been laying around for about a year and we've been handling it. And it's got a few spots on it. That's by no means Moser's fault in any way, shape, or form. It's just you know where it's been sitting around the shop. We use these rear ends all the time. And I thought it would be nice to include one with our content and the rest of the build series that goes along with this project. This is just the first part of it. And more will follow. I always get them with the top fill spout and a drain plug on the bottom, which I'll flip that up here so you can see it. This thing's not light by any means. Here's the drain plug. They've also got a 3 8 thick, I believe it is, front plate. It's got reinforcing steps inside, in the top as well. And the tubes are fitted in here. I'll stick the camera in and get a few better shots of it but there's reinforcing plates where the tubes come into the housing. This one has the big Tarina ends on it, which is something I usually add if the customers go ahead and let us order it for them. But what we're gonna do tonight is slide the axles in it so we can measure to get the space between the housing end and the outside of the axle flange so we can get the um, brackets cut for the rear disc to go on this car. Now here's an inside shot of the housing, and as you can see, I can zoom in a little bit tighter. That's the top fill spout you can see there inside view. And these two little pieces right here are just stiffeners. There's another pair in the bottom on either side of the drain plug, which here's a drain plug. And there's another pair in here. And let me drop you off the tripod here for a second. If you come around the end here and look, let me get some light here. And we'll stick you down in there. You can see where they've put a gusset where the tube comes into the housing. So this thing's about as solid as it can get. Now I like them because they tend not to deflect. And deflection is what tears up your center section. If you can take the flex out of the housing, you can stop a lot of damage to the ring and pinion on these things. Now another option this housing has is the boxed back brace. I always opt for this. It adds maybe two or three pounds to the overall weight of the rear end. A lot of people say it doesn't need it in certain applications, but I like to build things heavy where it's beneficial. It's kind of like using a stock block versus using a four bolt block versus using an aftermarket four bolt block. It's just a matter of how long is it going to last and how much punishment can it take. Like everything else made out of steel, these things do have a life cycle. The stiffer you make them, the longer the life cycle is. There's nothing wrong with a plain old nine inch Ford housing with a back strap on it. This is just tougher. For repetitive drag racing use, it just makes me feel better if something like this is under one of our cars. This car is not being tubbed. It's going to be on leaf springs. It needs every advantage it can get. So I opted for the back brace. Have you measured your caliper backspacing yet, sir? It's a terrifying question the first time you hear it when you've called the rear end manufacturer or the aftermarket brake manufacturer to order up a part for your new hot rod. And it seems a bit daunting when they tell you, you know, you need to pull a wheel off, you need to pull a drum off, you need to take a few measurements. And if, especially if you're new to the game or don't have a lot of experience with the parts under the car, you're going, oh my lord, what is all that? Well, it's really not that bad. This is one of those confidence building tasks that I spoke of in the thank you video. 
All you really need is a tape measure or a steel ruler. You don't even need a caliper, though the caliper makes it a lot more accurate. And I'm just going to go through the basic process right here. It really is as simple as it looks in the, vid in the forthcoming video. And if anybody would like to comment or add how they've measured it in the past or talk about their first time trying to do something like this, feel free. I'd be interested to hear what you got to say. Here we go. Now the next thing we got to do is measure the backspacing from the front edge of the bearing flange or the backing plate flange to the front edge of the axle flange which I'll slide in here in a minute but before we do that we need to wipe the hole out because as I've said a couple of times this thing's been sitting around for about a year and it's got a little bit of dust in it and you just want to make sure you get all that stuff out there's no trash anything that can scar or cause something to hang up take the axle Slide it in. Bearing will go in. You want to pull. Make sure it's all the way in. And I'm going to slide the camera over here a little bit. All right. Now, this little lip that's left here for the bearing is where the bearing retainer catches the bearing, which the bearing retainer in this case is going to be the caliper mountain bracket on the disc brakes and it'll come down over here and catch this lip now you want to make sure it's pushed all the way in and another thing that's nice about measuring this rear end is it's got the lightning holes in the axle flange so that gives us a place to stick the caliper through so want to open the calipers up wipe the surfaces off Roll it back up. Zero it. All right, so we got our notepad. And what I'm gonna do is just make me a little sketch. end wheel flange all right now what we're going to do and I've already zeroed the caliper all right so we got our caliper zeroed we're going to extend the long end of the caliper out we're going to come through the lightning hole in the axle flange push up against the outside edge of the backing plate bracket or housing end flange and then we're just going to push the caliper in until it touches then you want to rock it a little bit make sure it's square slide it out and we got 2518 so from here to here it's 2518 or two and a half inch spacing from here to here. Now, one other thing you always want to do when you're measuring these slide the axle back out, out a bit. Measure your bearing. This being a standard big terrain in, this should be 3150. And it is 3150. And that's bearing diameter. And that's all there is to measuring for the brackets for your caliper spacing when you're ordering your aftermarket brakes works on any rear end we just happen to be doing this one on a nine inch and that's really all there is to it bearing diameter housing end flange to the front of the wheel flange some people call this a back end plate flange but really it's a housing end and you and the outer flange because it's not necessarily a back end plate 
like in the case of this one, it's going to be the caliper bracket flange. So before we continue, let's discuss the application here for a second. It's a 2,500 pound bracket car, 5 to 600 horsepower naturally aspirated on leaf springs with a 9 to 10 inch slick. The half inch, 3 inch studs and 33 splines should be more than adequate for this application. If I was going much over the 600 horsepower mark, then I would go ahead and go with a 5 8 stud most definitely. And anytime I had a wider tire than 9 or 10 inches, I would go with a 5 8 stud if at all possible. Let's talk about axles. These are Moser 33 spline race axles. For the power levels this car is going to have, this is plenty of axle. What's good about these axles is you got the lightning holes in the wheel flange and they're drilled. So they're hollow inside. That takes off about two pounds per axle, maybe a little less. It offsets the weight added to the housing by those backing braces. That's why there's ways to make up for building things heavy where they need to be heavy and make it back up somewhere else. It's just a matter of thinking about it. If I add a pound and a half over here, where can I take a pound and a half at off at somewhere in the car? These rear ends are a perfect example. I've never actually done it, but if I ever get to the point that I scrap one of these rear ends, I'm going to cut those backing plates off or those back braces off and I'm going to weigh them and then I'm going to compare them to the same axle drilled and lightened versus the axle not drilled and lightened so I know what the exact offset is and I could just call the nice folks at Moser and ask them I guess I never have done that but it's always in my mind it's offset it because you pick one of these axles up that's not drilled and all it is quite a bit heavier quite a bit heavier you, you pound or two you feel it but these are nice axles. They got the sealed nine inch bearing on them. Uh, for those that haven't been in a nine inch before, nine inch does not have C-clips like most other rear ends. That's why there's no groove down here for a C-clip. The bearing retainer, or in the case of this setup, the caliper bracket for the disc, rear disc brakes is going to keep this bearing in. And this right here is the lock ring. When you put a bearing on this rear end, you have to take this lock ring off and then press the bearing off or take it off in some other methods and maybe we'll make a video about that some other time but this brand new bearing on a brand new axle so I'm not going to take it apart but it's got th um, three inch screw in half inch studs let me stand this thing up and here you can see the lightning holes these are also nice when you're putting the rear end together because you can stick a socket through there. Not all aftermarket axle flanges have a hole in them so that they can be double drilled for various pattern, bolt patterns as I mentioned earlier. These holes are great for when you're putting this thing together because you can get through there and grab the end of the nut, grab the end of the bolt, whatever you need to do when you're putting the brackets on. And that in a nutshell is a 33 spline race axle. And there's another shot at a drilling. I'm going to turn this build into a few videos, as I said earlier. Hopefully get some nice content out of it and everybody can learn some from it. Look forward to doing that. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, or subscribe below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again.